Corvo, if only there was someone else I trusted to send, so that you could remain near. But there is no one else, and the Spymaster was right to insist that I send you. The plague has taken so many, and we must find a cure. When you are near, my heart is at peace. Emily and I will count the days until you return. Hurry home, and bring good news. Welcome to the World of Dishonored, Arcane Studios' newest video game entry, where every choice you make impacts the world around you. Leaning heavily on Victorian setting with a great steampunk influence, the city of Dumwell offers a wonderfully dark and mysterious world where the lines between science and magic have been blurred beyond recognition. You play the role of Corvo, once honored bodyguard to the Empress of Dumwall. You find yourself imprisoned for a crime you didn't commit. Forced to flee and become an assassin, you must battle your way through the now devastated city in hopes of clearing your name and seeking vengeance on those who have wronged you. The game is presented as a fairly linear journey, but toys with the concept there are choices to make along the way. Each choice you make, from which guards you choose to kill or, or not kill, to how you choose to deal with your missions, not only impacts the story, but also the very environment itself. But really, does it accomplish this lofty goal? Well. Let's take a look and see if Dishonored is really worth all the hype. Okay, here we go. The visuals of Dishonored are really well done. They capture some of the best interpretations of a city in ruins I've seen in a long time. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Without revealing too much of the story, basically a great plague has broken out into the city, leaving both its architecture and citizens in a state of decay. When you travel through the city of Dunwall, it's easy to become immersed in the world around you. Once great towers and buildings lay in decay and ruin, citizens turn gang members walk the streets, all the while the Iron Fist of the City Watch do their very best to maintain order in the midst of chaos. Traveling through the world of Dishonored is a real treat visually. It has some great landscapes and creative designs scattered throughout the environments. To be honest, I spent a lot more time than I really needed to just exploring, and more times than not I found myself being rewarded with small stashes of hidden cash and resources that were needed. If I could only brag about one thing with this game, hands down it has to be the environments, because frankly, they're pretty. And I really like pretty things. But in all fairness, I do need to make one quick note. You will find yourself revisiting some areas throughout the course of the game, which, if you get cranky when things get repetitive, will have something to gripe about to your buddies when you go back to playing Call of Duty. Really though, I didn't find this to be a deal breaker, as the more time I spent in each section of the city, the more I was rewarded with hidden stashes that I found along the way. Someone get over here. Yeah. Let's talk gameplay. In Dishonored, gameplay is incredible. It's quick, it's responsive, and it's deviously satisfying. Combat offers a lot of variety, with a nice mix of conventional weapons such as pistols, crossbows, and daggers, but it mixes things up with adding in the dark arts such as teleportation, mind control, and a revolting ability to summon plague rats to devour your enemies. And yes, it is as gruesome as it sounds. Trust me, been there, done that, several times. If you've ever played Bioshock, you're going to feel right at home with a similar system of left and right hand abilities. All of your abilities and weapons are assigned hotkeys, 1 through 0, and if you were rocking a Razor Naga like I was during my playthrough, it made for some quick weapon switching, offering me a much needed advantage during combat. I mentioned that combat is satisfying, and part of the reason that it is is because being victorious in combat is as much about thinking strategically as it is about running and gunning your way through the game. Realistically, if you do try to run and gun your way through the game, you're going to end up looking up at the sky with a dagger in your chest and then having to select load the last save point. It doesn't work here. Being effective in combat in this game is about thinking fast and being comfortable with your weapons and abilities. If you can manage this, you will find a lot of satisfaction when you pull off that perfect assassination that you've been planning out. Overall, combat's incredible in this game, but it is different than what you'd expect in your typical first person shooter. As I have mentioned, this game is all about choice, and that includes how you decide to engage the enemy. Stealth plays a major role in Dishonored, as facing off with more than a couple of guards doesn't generally end in your favor. One thing I did notice with the stealth system was that it reminded me a lot of Splinter Cell, and that you can hide in the dark. However, 
One thing I also made note of is that the enemy has incredible night vision and can always find you in the dark, which kind of defeats the purpose of hiding in the dark in the first place. I discovered that it is crucial that you're always behind the target when trying to get that stealth kill in. Simply being in the dark isn't enough. Thankfully, as if to compensate for the NPC night vision issue, you do generally have a few seconds upon being spotted to either run away or silence the enemy before he can set off the alarm. If you prefer a less lethal approach to life, there's room for that too. And although I can't personally attest to this, I think it's possible that you could make it through most of the game without actually killing anyone. But really, why would you want to? With so many incredible abilities and weapons at your disposal, you can't help but want to try a few of those out. Scavenge the city for valuables and I will resell them on the black market. That should give us the money to craft the things you need. As you progress through Dishonored, you're going to gain access to new abilities, weapons, and upgrades. The latter two being purchasable with cash you collect in the world. Abilities, on the other hand, can only be obtained and upgraded by collecting mystical dark art runes scattered throughout the city. But don't worry, because you don't have to wander aimlessly through the streets hoping to stumble upon these runes. In fact, early on you're given a tool that will help you locate each one, and this, coupled with the helpful on-screen prompts, make finding these little gems more like an easter egg hunt and less like looking for a needle in a haystack. Or in a trash bin, which would be more appropriate in the setting. Storytelling in Dishonored is superb, with a wonderful mix of in-game cutscenes, NPC dialogue during gameplay, and text in the form of letters and journals scattered throughout the world. Don't panic though if you're not keen on reading endless pages of text, because neither am I. And despite my blatant disregard for most all things text during my playthrough, enough of the storytelling is presented in other mediums that you don't really miss anything critical. The story itself is well written, albeit a little bit predictable. What makes it great is not that it is presenting an entirely new concept, but rather that it takes familiar concepts and presents them from a unique point of view. Having the ability to choose how the story plays out keeps things fresh in an otherwise pretty standard literary tale. The story leans heavily on the concept of morality down to who you choose to save or even kill. I really like the direction that Arcane Studios went with this whole concept of morality. It was a nice subtle touch that made me want to invest in the characters. That being said, I would have loved to have seen this go a bit deeper during this gameplay and story arc. More than once I felt like if I killed one person during a mission, there wasn't much by way of tilting the morality scale back. And so from time to time, I simply went on a knife wielding rampage, teleporting from guard to guard, decimating the sea, leaving no one behind for no other reason than because I could. Having a bit more consequence to my action probably would have been a good thing. At the end of the day, if you enjoy quick, intelligent combat that requires as much thought as reaction, you're going to feel right at home with Dishonored. If you enjoy good story in a world of rich lore, then I highly recommend you check out this game. Despite a few minor critiques, this is a game that delivers on the goods, offering a replayable, immersive experience that will keep you coming back for more. Be sure to check out Dishonored and all our other games from Ultimatum Games at UGKeys.com.